See, I'm holding weeds now in my hand. This is lamb's quarters. I live on it, practically, if I can get a hold of it. And if I live in a country, that's all I've used. Lamb's quarters. You, I bet you've been throwing them away all over the place, haven't you? You pass it along, why don't you? Yeah, when I feel that some controversy uh, seems to be floating around, I immediately send the uh, whatever is the problem to the Mr. Lyles, which does the alternative testing. He worked for the government for 15 years, testing the uh, food for human, food for pets, and 15 years, and then he says, well, <laughs> it's kind of uh, defeated my purpose if when I learn the truth. You cannot test uh, the uh, raw food or cooked food, uh, same with chemicals, not to be the same. And that's why I give up the testing food for government, because whatever, you know, the chemicals kill the uh, raw food especially wood, of course, living food, and it shows exactly in the textbooks alike. And that's why we got hooked on the cooked food, I'm sure. And uh, naturally, uh, immediately came back to report that Rejubilac is the key and is nothing to do with East, absolutely nothing to do with East. The way the Kindiri came in, he told me also, quite a few years ago, before they discovered the name Candida, the animals got very sick. And the reason the animals got very sick, because the silos, if you, if you know, if you're a farmer, what silo is in a barn, is generally the, the seeds, the grains, or whatever, or even the grass is put in these silos to ferment. And because sometimes they don't uh, able to do it just the right time, if it gets too hot, it mildews. And that's where your candida came in, from mildew. Because mildew is, has certain condition, I don't know what it is, but candida, hypoglycemic, of course AIDS is the same, same uh, path, has nothing but serious digestion problem. A, the uh, fermentation is not yeast, which they worry about because when a person has yeast syndrome or whatever it is, it has nothing to do with the real yeast anyway. And doctors do not understand the difference. And it's a really pity because most people believe these, these things because they're supposed to be experts. And they have to really, anybody's interested enough to really understand what, doc, what uh, Lyles, Ivy Lyles says about it. I'd be glad to send them the report on it, to send me the address, because you can really contact even him and get the, whatever necessary from it. Because to me, it's a, it's a very, very unfortunate thing when that comes out like that, okay? How do you break sugar addiction? Sugar addiction, of course, naturally starts almost as a, as a starter to bigger, worse, you know, health destroyers because of deficiency, nothing else. You know, I have so many people come in. I have a little boy about five years old. And he was, like, he was like a drug addict. He wanted sweets so badly that he didn't like the energy soup, by the way. And that's the only thing that solved the problem, of course. His mother said he had it all his life. He was five. And actually, what I gave him, that little banana, you know the day I do with banana? I said, you eat your energy soup now. I'll give you the bills, that sugar, which I suppose certain amount, sweet. And he couldn't wait quick enough to get that energy soup in him, to get that. And one day, his mother says, too many bananas, giant bananas. You know, he went up there and on the shelf trying to find out honey, where the honey was. He almost knocked himself out doing it. You know, they just like addicts. They're addicted to, to sweets. And that is the start. 
deficiency is the only reason. I have had alcoholic person for I don't know how many years, ever since she was 13, she was 45 or something like that. And she tried everything. She goes to these uh, naturally uh, meetings, alcoholic, synonymous, but she always used the willpower. Only two weeks in the, with this living food, she had absolutely no desire, absolutely no desire whatsoever. The same with smoking. Well, to me, disease names doesn't mean anything because naturally, uh, whatever the, the body was allowed through perhaps the treatment for a long period becomes very serious impaired. That means it takes longer. Naturally, that's why I get excited over the, uh, we call allergies, because allergy is so quick that people get back to health and energy if they're ready, of course, you know, willing to do it. But with a serious problem, uh, any kind that's been treated or operated for a long period, it takes some time, sometimes three months, sometimes a year even. With cancer generally, because I worked with cancer for 30 years, generally it takes somewhere in there. You know, I had a funny experience I want to tell you about cancer. Nurse from uh, Australia came with cancer, breast cancer. And uh, she stayed with us three weeks. And she says, my lump has gone way down. What's happening? And I immediately sensed it. Immediately, it wasn't cancer. But I didn't say anything to her. I know the tumor goes down very, very quickly. So I said to her, when you go back to your country, be sure that you continue this program very, very strict, as you've been doing, and then have a test made. She went after three weeks to the doctor. I said, don't believe all the same doctor because he perhaps wouldn't believe such thing. I don't want to believe, maybe. So I said, I have several tests you. And she had the first one test her, no signs of anything. No cancer will go away in six weeks. It's impossible. Cancer takes at least maybe three months to six months because I've had that experience for 30 years, I know all about it. But there's your cancer success lies. See, did you remember the breast of the uh, board and uh, what's other, you know, the vice president's wife? A uh, few other. Betty, yes, had the breast removed. They didn't have cancer. Cancer is in your blood. You cannot remove cancer. But if you remove those tumors, like generally they do, because it was kind of a fashion, wasn't it? Everybody's removing their, their breasts. <laughs> and you know, just tumor. But I want to say this. The reason doctor removes that tumor, they know it's going to be cancer. They know it's going to be cancer. They say it's cancer. So naturally, you're going to get scared. If you remove that, it will not come back. Well, eventually, it will come back because you are unhealthy if you don't change. But if you had naturally uh, in your blood, you can't cut out your blood, can you? You see all these people dying with cancer, don't you? Because they have the real cancer. And you cannot treat it because your body gets lower and lower in health. That's what happens. Wheatgrass juice is so good. Why does it taste so bad for many people? <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, I don't ever advocate wheatgrass if they can't, if they feel that way. Well, I believe this way, reason for it, that when you're too toxic, the body wants to get rid of this stuff quickly, wants to get rid of it. And my suggestion also is dilute it, chew it. Take implants. Perhaps you know what the plants, implants are. <laughs> I know you don't. But anyway, you learn in that little booklet anyway. <laughs> You're going to have, you know, that little booklet has everything, my dears. So don't think for a minute that you're deprived of anything, if you're ready. If someone is on insulin for more than five years, what is the success rate? 
My dear one, I just said on, a, on the screen, on that slide, that I had two diabetics in that hospital. It was a month research. I had 53 patients. I had quite a few diabetics, but two diabetics, it was very revealing. And especially the old man, 60s or more, his eyes were failing. He was insulin for, for 20 years, uh, about 20 years. He was completely off insulin in just three weeks. The, the other fellow, I mentioned me talk about it on the, on the slide, six weeks. He was with insulin as a young so of one year old for 20 years, six weeks. Uh, it's not a big deal. That's what I call quickies. <laughs> How can one stay on this regime and keep warm in the winter? How can I keep mm. cats out of the wheatgrass? They love it. <laughs> well, they, they are very wise, I assure you. I think the animals, that's how I discovered the wheat grass was the most important before I had it tested. It's almost identical to your blood, by the way. And I didn't know the rye or the gra other grains that were for me to use. So the animals kept laying on it, kept eating it. And I said, well, they must have more. They work from within themselves more than we do. And uh, I can rest assured that's what's happening. And uh, let me see what else. There was two questions, wasn't it? How to keep warm in the winter. How to keep warm. <clears throat> Basically, um, the warm, cool food does not keep you warm. What keeps you warm and keeps you cold in a, in a summer, real hot summer, is your circulation. If you have pollution, polluted blood, your circulation is not good. You're going to get cold feet. You're going to get cold. So it has nothing to do with food at all. Just your mental you know, acceptance, which you hear so much about. With all the different philosophies on food, do you concern yourself with food combining at all? Yes, I do. I really do. I'm, I'm really a crank on it. But I believe, like I said, you saw so many foods there. I would need it. I eat very, very, very simple. I eat the combining of, by the way, the juicy, the combinations, in many books right now. It's about 50 years old. We have a chart that is, we call living food chart, is much, much different from the old one. And also, the, uh, another thing that you heard anybody talking about, using watermelon with energy soup, watermelon is not melon. Watermelon is fruit vegetable. And we use the, the I had a test, the rind is better part of it than the pink, much healthier. And that's what we generally blend for energy soup. I've been told chlorella is just as good as wheatgrass. Can you do both? <laughs> well, I tell you, my dears, uh, I'm not against people make steps, of course, but I do know that there's nothing you have everything that you packaged in cannot be, because life in these elements we call, I call nourishment, you call food, has to be complete. So if you do anything to it, dehydrate it in a hot uh, temperature, if you package it, you cannot retain any vitamin. Vitamin is life force. You can perhaps, if you do it only 110 degrees, which we dehydrate, uh, you can retain your uh, enzymes and protein, but it's also altered, and minerals and what other elements you have. But you have to remember that these things and packages are not done by health people. And there's nothing equal to life as it grows in organic, completely uh, healthy and fresh. Nothing, you replace it. Colonic irrigation and enemas, what to do with this? Oh, colonic irrigation and enemas, what do you do with that? Well, I, I don't see any other way that when you want to get healthy, is the, I've embraced these four things. First, the wonderful 
earth which grows the food, I call nourishment, and then you make it easy to digest, and so that we are balanced completely and not, you know, just dieting with it, and then cleaning out the colon, and stop worrying about disease, and knowing that the body is self-healer. Colonic, naturally, is a specialty, which is good to have it, perhaps, to start off with this uh, kind of lifestyle, because you will feel better right away. Immediately, you feel different. But basically, if you need the enema, there's no way you can run to colonic every day. You need to take enema if you really mean business. And I feel that goes along with, especially with these allergy pro people, no other way you can get over your problem or any kind of that serious problem. What do you do with the sprout water from seeds? The sprout water from seeds naturally depends what kind of seeds they are. We wouldn't use it because we don't know if they've been sprayed. And the secret of sprouting is that you release those things by soaking and, and rinsing. And I don't believe that anyone should drink it. Of course, you can, you can water your plants with it. Maybe they can put up with it if it's not uh, if it's sprayed. How long does it take to dissolve a non-carcinogenic I mean, non cyst on your regime? Well, nobody can, uh, can uh, how long. You see, I never tell people what to do. I guide only and how much and also how long it takes because it doesn't make sense. Because what you're going to do would make a difference. How you're going to be caring enough to rebuild your health, to provide the means for the body to self-heal itself. I can't, how can anybody tell? Because if, you, if I told somebody it's going to be done in three weeks, he says, well, gee, it's, well, it's wonderful, you know. I don't need to worry about it, you know. I'm just going to kind of carry on, you know, with not too much uh, care because, you know, I have promised, you see. <laughs> and what happens? Nothing. I've been on raw foods for two months, and the soles of my feet burn constantly. Why? I can't tell you why, because I don't know the real uh, reasons for it, because basically, I'm not sure that you've been living food to begin with. Living food and raw food is two different things. If you had allergies, no way you can eat raw food. And you can have all kinds of symptoms. You can have spell dizzy symptoms. You can have, I don't know, terrible headaches from raw food, thinking that's living food. Because I keep saying that people with allergies cannot eat raw food. You have to blend it. You are like I show you, have fermented. You have to make it easy to digest. There's no way you can eat that when you have allergies, and you can have all these symptoms. I don't know for sure why. Do you find people who can't take Rejuvalac because it's fermented? Well, because the reason that they don't know how to make it, doesn't taste good, and a lot of people have ideas. Because it's good for you, they must drink it no matter how bad it is. I've heard that too. Nothing should taste bad with this living food. And if you don't make it right, you soak the wheat too much, they will not sprout, and they, then they begin to spoil, you're not going to get a good rejuvenate. And that's why you don't want it, or whatever. To learn, it, this is through education. This is not just because I'm talking to you how good it is and whatever. It cannot be that way. Can you use hard winter wheat berries to make rejuvelac? You can make with rejuvelac with hard winter wheat, but it's not as good. I made it also with rye, uh, and I made it with other grains, with wheat together. It, it works much better. I'm a competitive weightlifter. Can wheatgrass benefit me, and how? Well, as you know, we had a, we call, muscle person. He was a football player, and by the way, he had cancer. He was taking the steroid, steroid, whatever it is, you know, lifting weights, 
big muscles. And he came to, uh, to Boston for two, he stayed three weeks, by the way. And he was worried about his muscles more than anything else, by the way. <laughs> and you know, he never lost his muscles. I'm telling you. And because I told him, I said, if you don't want to lose your muscles, energy soup is a thing. You can't fast, because they would lose you know, their flesh more. And by the way, I have the testimonial. He went home after two weeks. Oh yes, when, I, when they diagnosed his cancer, and they said he was finishing his last year in college. He was football, you know, one of those football stars. And he said, you can never play again. You cannot finish your college because you only got two months to live. The, the, the way cancer was, I can't remember exact the detail about his cancer. They couldn't operate on him. That's the reason he came. He was with us three weeks and he came back to home Two more weeks, he continued the program. He find no signs of cancer. That was blood cancer, I think. Not lump, you know. Well, I think you kind of answered this, but how do you treat and cure cancer? How differently do you approach a cancer in the lymphatic system versus an isolated cancer in an organ? We don't, we don't, uh, you know, worry about the areas or anything else because again I say some conditions take longer, cancer included, and it just the body is self healer. So the name is just a name really to my understanding. And what really the most important thing is naturally is are you interested? And I personally say that no one needs to be sick. Absolutely to me, it's a waste of time. It really is. Because it's very sad that we have been given this planet, this wonderful planet. And we've missed, messed it up, of course, quite a bit. But now the time has come when we have to really be examples. And everyone has to begin to really awake up as a spiritual beings, understanding they have responsibility the physical, mental, emotional. I've written a book, You Are the Light of the World. You are the light of the world. There's no question about it. But in from whatever corner you can shine, it make a real impression on your friends, on your relatives, because that's what I, I think you should tell your testimonial very shortly, why you went in this kind of uh, lifestyle or begin to help others. And I told you mine. And I think Karen should come in and tell hers. What do you think? Oh, you got some more? I thought you were finished. <laughs> OK, go ahead. Why do you see the nuts, beans, rice, et cetera, constantly? The, the beans, the nuts, and all those, like I mentioned, the three different uh, beans cannot be digested by allergy people. Impossible. Naturally, they're going to constipate you. Naturally, they're going to make you uh, feel bad. They all be blended. You know, I, I do the almond besides my energy soup. I take the almonds, I soak the almonds about uh, almost, say, two days sometimes because they're very hard. And then I put them in hot water a very short period and I peel them and I blend it. After I blend, I make this almond cream, and I put it in the refrigerator. And generally, I use that with those protein nuggets. You can make milk. You take about two, three tablespoons of that cream. It's, it tastes, by the way, like sour cream from, from the almonds. And you put, mix it with rejuvelac. Then you have your milk. And it's very, very handy to have, to put it even in energy soup. Zip it up the energy soup, if you want to taste it. We'll do a couple quick more and then we'll go. What do you think of taking medication while, while waiting for the living food's detoxification to work? Naturally, anyone that's, that has a crutch, that's what I call medication, crutch. You should never take it off right away because it will take time for you to get back to health. This was the greatest mistake to 
to think that I would stand up and say, you don't need a medication. Because especially with heart condition, the, this medication is trying to keep you up. If you zip it off, and the living food cannot bring you health overnight, no way. And slowly you remove it, like I said, the insulin or any other problem. And you have to use common sense. I personally believe that medical has its place too. I don't ever condemn anything because I believe that we all have a place on this planet to do whatever we have to do. Well, that doesn't make sense to me, because basically what wheatgrass does, it just, because it has every element, the blood has except iron, and actually is nourishment, is nourishment, and same time is cleanser. What is breast cancer? It's nothing but pollutants. What, pollu what the wheatgrass and the living food together will do is does two things, cleanse and rebuilds. So how could it do any harm? I mean, it just ideas are floating around. It's too bad. Well, you want testimony? Do you want to take some more questions, or do you want to? Sure, whatever. Okay. Not tired. What do you mean tired, <laughs> guys? <laughs> Who's tired? Um, <laughs> um, regarding growing wheatgrass, does the mold get into the grass itself, or is it safe to cut above the mold? Uh, the uh, wheatgrass, uh, when you plant, the wheat should not be planted too, especially in the winter, I mean the summer hot weather, too close, too thick. The reason that you have the mold, one, is that you have too thick, and then also you remove the, uh, the cover, which is supposed to be uh, also wet, moist, and then the little babies can have the means to put themselves into the earth, you know, by sprouting. They go into the earth, they don't, they don't spoil. And what, when it spoils, that's what makes the mold. Because they, when you plant too, clo too uh, thick, they cannot reach the earth. And they dry up and begin to spoil, and that's what your mold is. No, it doesn't affect. If you don't, if you don't use the mold, that's all. It can affect the grass. And what do you suggest for chronic fatigue syndrome? Well, we're talking about fatigue syndrome is nothing but allergy, digestion problem, uh, poor elimination, and worry. <laughs> because doctors said you can't help you, don't know what's the matter, maybe it's in your head and so forth. And again, I said, we want to do some experiment. If anybody is interested to learn, I think Karen's going to have some workshop to make this energy soup and how to start the, the, the we call research on these allergies for two or three weeks and prove it scientifically, I hope, how the difference can be in that short period with these we call a chronic fatigue syndrome. <laughs> It's the most simplest thing in the world to, for the body to heal itself. What do you suggest for someone who suffers from candida? Well, that's candida is the same on the same roof. And I could go on, I said there's, there's about 130 symptoms, including epilepsy and hypoglycemic and uh, headaches. And you can go on and on, AIDS with the same thing. They all go on the same roof. So you can name it. I said they have 30, 130 names uh, with the we call symptoms. What about the ascorbic acid in sprouts? I've heard that it promotes the growth of cancer, not retarded. <laughs> I, I don't know what that is because this is just floating around something. Because it doesn't make sense. You see, what you really want to do, and really important thing to learn, is to, to learn the principles about nature. You see, when I'm talking about this, it's naturally new to you, you know, this indoor gardens. But actually, I go back. I go back to the original lifestyle which Hippocrates 
used for the medicine. Food is your medicine. You can't say that with food now. The radiated and, and factory made and I don't know what else, food. And yet, he had centers. He used the air, the water, the sunshine. And he put big emphasis on food. Food is your medicine, right? So I'm really going back to a seen type of life because that's what Jesus lived and learned about health. And there's no way that we could ever get to call total health from, except turn back to nature. Get connected with our, what we really are. We are part of the Mother Earth. And we talk about God the Father, but we have to connect because we are negative and positive. Everything in life is negative, positive. We have to connect ourselves with it again. Why does one institute, institute suggest Dr. Dophilus instead of Rejuvelac, saying if Rejuvelac is not prepared correctly, it has the wrong bacteria? Because they don't know anything, or rather, they don't want to be bothered, all I can say, because as I explained to you, the doctors do not understand the difference between fermentation and yeast. So if anybody complains, and they say, well, we take it off because you know, I don't want to be bothered to investigate or whatever, to do the right thing, I all I can say. Oh, oh yes. Well, what I do with it, what I've done is this. Uh, with my little precious little dog, uh, I give her two times or three times sometimes a day energy soup. And I put, this is very balanced you know, nourishment, and I put a little bit something on it that she likes, tiny little bit chicken, very, very crushed. I, I generally cook it once a month or say every six weeks, put in a little plastic bag, and then uh, uh, freeze it and just sprinkle over the top. And then you do that same thing with animals, any kind of animals. And they begin to lap up the soup. You never say like it how beautiful they look, because animal cannot live also with cooked food and the canned food and all the other. Animals more sicker than you can imagine because they never have even protection. Do you ever see that food they have in the markets? All chemicals. And our animals, there's more money spent on animal diseases now than even humans. Well, I tell you, um, uh, I don't, uh, I don't uh, naturally criticize the, uh, the yogurts and all the other things because uh, you can also understand that these things are not made by a person that is in health. It's not fermented. It's more likely put in some vinegar in it. It looks like, you know, they have, they have ways and means to prepare that. It's a done at big, big scale, those things. They're not, if you made your own yogurt, you will find entirely different, would be health. But they put chemicals to keep it too, don't forget that. And how do you stop the tooth erosion? What well, the same with tooth and, and the eyes or anything else in your part of the body, it's all one anyway. When you begin to have this problem with your hair, you know what happens? Deficiency, that's all. So you are one, you're not separated. It's all one, yeah. Uh, I broke my right foot three times. I lived in two nursing homes and five years ago I had a stroke. And I have, when I left the nursing home 10 years ago, I said, I am getting out of here and I don't know where I'm going, but I'm a very religious person and the only thing, somehow I found myself in fruitful real health was during rural Illinois. And you know how we all are? We all say, have you tried this? Have you done mm -hmm. that? And it was all twisted up. I have a whole wardrobe of wheelchairs, crutches, canes, cats. You know, somebody needs them. I mm -hmm. probably can let you use them. And I remember going to Cancer Victors and Friends, which is the organization that I am president of and Karen is going to be the speaker. And please come. Please. We've been there 17 years, keeping all of this alive. Harlem and Surmac. And we address every problem, you know, and you, you have to tell each other. Cindy Grisco, who is now Dr. Cindy Grisco, 
was very crippled up with, and if I'm incorrect, somebody stop me, uh, with uh, rheumatoid arthritis. She was already becoming deformed, and it took the her next 15 people, minutes to next. walk from her bed to the bathroom. And I said to Cindy, I, was, I had arthritis, I said, Cindy, you have to tell me what you're doing, because I directed my problem to Cindy. You know, those of you who have other problems, you have to go elsewhere. And she says, you got to try this wheatgrass. And believe me, this mm. lady, you know, mm. and her health, and you know, you look at me, I've got, I've already gotten two college degrees, and they tell me, forget it, you're nuts, and I have all kinds of diagnoses, you know, fibrositis, I can't even mm. think of all, every doctor told me mm. something else. Mm. Manic, depressive, what did I write on there, cure? <laughs> I mean, mm. name a doctor, and they, they diagnose me as, as something else. Mm. And arthritis, uh, rheumatism, oh, yeah. uh, Whatever, and the, and the diet or the best diagnosis was in '77. They said you have to you have to have a hysterectomy. And I said why? Said, because sooner or later you're going to need one. <laughs> <laughs> and I said you know I think when God sent me here, He didn't say every couple of years get rid of some parts. I said I think when I go, I should take all my parts with me. <laughs> they taught, I mean, they taught you know those of us who have yeah. undergone this problem unnoticed. I said, you must sign because <laughs> and I just, the words that right we're mm. familiar with this. Mm. You, I said, I don't know where it came from. Patients' rights and that phone because they were booking. I'll never forget them booking mm. me for surgery. I felt like I was a horse that fought for a cart where well, I live in Cisco. You know, <laughs> booking me. It still drives me nuts. And I said no. And I and oh yeah, they said I had cancer. I had so many. I look like a medical dictionary. You know. And I'm, in, I'm studying medicine now because you have to learn why, why the pain. I had so much pain, I couldn't stand it. I couldn't remember. And I mean, in college, I mean, I'm always having problems because I'm a big tr chief troublemaker. If you come to Cicero, that's me. I took on the college and the town and CTA. Anybody gets in my way. But you must, mm -hmm. must mm -hmm. listen to mm -hmm. what is tuned into your body. And I want you to address silver amalgams mm -hmm. because that's the, you know, all of us, that's the current problem. Mm. And you, you really have to, I went from a size 10 to a size 20 living in the wheelchair. And believe me, getting off that weight, is, and you know, you have to make your body, I have to tell you, when I had my stroke, they said, oh, um, eight days in a hospital. Oh, well, you know, we can't mm. find anything wrong with you. So then I, after all of that, then the shrink came, who knows me for 10 years. He says, uh, you know, we don't know what's wrong with you, quietly. You know how they do that when nobody's listening? I registered into a dance class, two dance classes, four yoga classes, swimming classes, and I had trouble thinking and speaking and walking mm. and eating this. And, you, and nobody helped me. I did this all on the bus all by myself. So stop looking for somebody else. Mm. Mm. Take control and come to these classes. Take self-help, the whatever it takes. I've, I've, I've been at Unity for 14 years since we were at, at the Ambassador. Mm. I went to every self, you know how we are seminar freaks? Mm. You're going to do it and you're going to win. You have to talk mm. like that to yourself. Mm. Listen to these people. Thank you very much. Yeah, please. <laughs> can you, can you do it? Mm. Mm. No. Well, yes, uh, I heard so much about it, but only thing I can say, you know, there's so many bad, we call hazardous things that are coming into our body continuously. And I think sometimes certain books you read about it, that does it, you know, you just one thing does it. I think, you know, if you have that kind of real, real fear of that, my suggestion would be to eliminate that fear. You take the uh, chew your wheatgrass, or you take a bun, you know, like uh, if you, you know, go and drink it like a swallow, leave it in your mouth for a few minutes, like five minutes. I bet you counteract that whatever it is there. And I think this, because to me, when you have a lot of feelings and think you're going to yank them all out, it, it's quite a job <laughs> and expensive too. So uh, best thing to get healthy. Now remember, if you healthy, on this planet we're living now, so many hazards, we can keep healthy in spite of all. Uh, I want, mm. 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 
you know, I'm so happy and I love you and I think you're just wonderful. Besides, I hope that I will come back and we'll give a one big, big workshop. And I want some real testimonies by then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.